life in the danger zone. When a disaster hits, it can be hard to find food. Houses may be without running water. In fact, the houses themselves may have been destroyed. There may be nowhere to live, nowhere to sleep, and nothing to eat. Disasters can be scary, but the ways they bring people together can be unforgettable. Natural disasters can happen anytime, anywhere. What's the best way to avoid a disaster? Know when one is coming. Progress has been made in predicting disasters. Scientists track weather patterns. They watch for impending floods and hurricanes. But when it comes to predicting earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, it gets more difficult. Often, they occur without any warning. Natural disasters will continue to affect us no matter what we do, but we can prepare for them. And when the worst happens, we can work together to rebuild what was lost. Danger from above. The night sky is home to millions of stars. In their midst, rocks and metals are speeding toward Earth in the form of shooting stars. Some of these meteors are small and burn up in our atmosphere. Others strike the Earth, forming craters. There are also asteroids flying toward us. Scientists watch for these falling stars. They try to predict where they will land next so they can prevent serious damage. Astronomers also watch for comets. These huge balls of rock and ice could be deadly if they struck Earth. The danger is remote, though. Getting hit by a deadly meteor is less likely than winning the lottery. It's less likely than receiving an Oscar or becoming an astronaut. And scientists are watching the skies closely to help us avoid disaster. Dinosaur Disaster Seventy million years ago, dinosaurs ruled the world. But everything changed when a huge meteor hit Earth. The impact caused a massive dust cloud. The dust darkened the sky and hid the sun for months. Plant life died without the sun's light. The dark days left plant-eating dinosaurs without food, and they couldn't survive. When the plant-eating dinosaurs died, it left no food for the others. Soon, even the larger meat-eating dinosaurs died off too. They became extinct, but smaller creatures like mammals survived. They became the new rulers of the land. Today, humans, the most intelligent mammals in the world, dominate. Trouble from below. Some disasters rumble, shake, and rip the ground we stand on. Others spew molten lava and rock high in the sky, make huge clouds of ash, and melt everything they touch. Earthquakes and volcanoes start underground, but the havoc they wreak happens on the ground where we live. Volcanoes. A powerful volcanic eruption can bury a whole city, and a massive eruption has the power to wipe out humankind. The danger lies deep in the Earth's layers. We build our homes on Earth's crust, the top layer. The crust is made up of pieces that are different shapes and sizes. These large pieces of the crust are called plates. Volcanoes form in the space where the plates meet just as a weed grows out of a crack in the cement. Hot lava, magma, and gases escape between these cracks to create a volcano. When too much pressure forms, volcanoes erupt, throwing burning lava, dangerous gases, and hot ash into the air. 
An eruption can cause serious damage to the surrounding areas. Scientists work with governments to warn people and prevent the most serious damage. Krakatoa. Boom! Like many islands, Krakatoa was formed from a volcano. A million years later, in 1883, the volcano erupted again. The thunderous eruption was heard 2,200 miles away. People were surprised because the volcano had been peaceful for more than 200 years. They didn't think there would be any danger. The powerful blast formed a cloud of ash that blocked the sun for 180 miles. Debris fell over 300,000 square miles. It took three years for the dust to settle. Two-thirds of the island was destroyed. Mount St. Helens. Volcanoes can be found on continents as well as on islands. The United States is home to Mount St. Helens in Washington State. Just 100 miles south of Seattle, it is still active. In 1980, an earthquake changed the pressure inside Mount St. Helens. That caused the north side to bulge. Two months later, another earthquake led to an eruption that lasted nine hours. It threw rocks and ash into the air and caused mudslides. Eleven states reported falling volcanic ash. The debris from the explosion destroyed 150 miles of nearby forests. Early warnings helped keep many people safe. Scientists are able to warn of eruptions even earlier now. Earthquakes. Volcanic eruptions are just one kind of disaster that happens under our feet. Sometimes the plates in the Earth's crust shift. The plates can push, pull, or slide against each other. This movement causes changes in the land we live on. When the plates push together, they create geographical features like mountain ranges. When they pull apart, they create space for volcanoes to form. But whenever these plates move, it causes an earthquake. Earthquakes can cause buildings to collapse. Powerful quakes can even cause a tsunami to flood the shore. But technology is improving, and we are finding ways to prevent damage. Ancient quakes. The world's deadliest earthquake is believed to have happened in the year 1201. The epicenter was in Syria, but the quake was felt many miles away, too. At that time, people didn't design buildings with earthquakes in mind, so the great quake destroyed their towns. Over a million people died. The magnitude of the earthquake was 7.6 on the Richter scale. Throughout history, there have been stronger earthquakes, but this quake was felt over a large area and people were unprepared. This resulted in the high death toll and extreme damage throughout the region. Today, we could survive an earthquake this size. The Great Quake. Very early, one morning in 1906, the coastline of California shook. The epicenter of the earthquake was just off the coast of San Francisco. Buildings collapsed, trees were uprooted, gas pipes cracked and leaked out into the air. A fire spread rapidly through the city. The fire burned for three days and nights. 
The San Francisco earthquake of 1906 nearly destroyed the city. But because of what happened, engineers learned how to build cities that could survive earthquakes. When you least expect it, disaster can come from anywhere. Sometimes the things we need most, like food, water, and the sun's warmth, fail us. Although the dangers can be unexpected, new ways to survive can be found in unexpected places too. Floods. We use water for drinking, cleaning, and cooking. But when water becomes hard to control, it can destroy everything in its path. Floods occur when there is too much water for the ground to absorb. During a flood, rivers and creeks can overflow. Water can overtake cities and towns as it covers buildings or bridges. Flood water moves quickly and can wash away whatever or whoever is in it. A deadly summer. In the winter of 1931, the worst flood in modern history poured through China. The snow that year was heavy. When it thawed in the spring, there was excess water in the major rivers. China's Yellow River, Yangtze River, and Huai River were full before the heavy rains began in summer. It rained over two feet in August alone. As a result, all three rivers rose. It started to flood. The flood covered a massive area. Diseases spread in the moist environment. More than four million people died from the flood. Today, doctors know how to prevent these types of diseases. Flood victims are moved to clean, dry areas quickly. Hurricane Katrina. Rivers aren't the only source of wet disasters. In 2005, a hurricane hit the southern coast of the United States. Hurricanes start over the ocean with strong winds and blinding rains. Then, storm surges hit the coast. These powerful waves of water are stirred up by the hurricane. When Hurricane Katrina flooded the south, the rain and winds caused major damage. Houses were torn from the ground and lakes overflowed with water. But the flooding that came from the storm surge did the most damage. It left many cities along the coast completely underwater. The damage from Katrina is thought to have cost over $80 billion. Tsunami. Sometimes an earthquake or volcanic eruption is not the end of this story. Either one can trigger a tsunami. When the earth shakes, the ocean is affected as well. Huge tidal waves wash over the land. These waves can cause the same damage as a flood. Tsunamis are among the worst disasters. The land is already hurt from the volcano or earthquake, and then it is flooded by the waters of the tsunami. Japanese Tsunami March 11th, 2011 marked one of the worst natural disasters for Japan. On that day, both an earthquake and a tsunami hit. It was the most powerful earthquake ever to hit Japan. It was a magnitude 9.0 quake. Within an hour, waves over 10 feet tall began to crash on the shores. For days, waves lashed against the coast. They destroyed buildings, bridges, and homes. The strongest waves were over 33 feet tall. 
Japan's tsunami warning system saved lives. Many people were able to escape to safety. Famine and drought. Terrible things can happen when there is too much water. But not having enough water can be just as deadly. Droughts are painfully dry periods that can scar the land and people for decades. When there isn't enough rain, soil becomes parched. Without water, the ground can't keep plants healthy and alive. The dry conditions can lead to famine. Droughts and famine often occur together, but they can also happen on their own. But famine is a disaster that can be prevented. And when we work together, no one needs to go without food. The Great Potato Famine In the early 1800s, the people of Ireland fed their families with potatoes. Nearly half of the country lived on potatoes. But in the mid-1800s, disease struck the potato plants. The crops failed, and a great famine took hold. People had nothing to eat. Farmers had no way to make money. Over one million people died. Another million left Ireland to make their homes in places with more food. Many moved to the United States to make new lives for themselves. Heat wave. Droughts can destroy the food supply system and make life a struggle. But heat waves can cause just as much damage. In 2003, a horrible heat wave hit Europe. The temperature was hotter than it had been in 500 years. Almost 30,000 people died. They didn't know how to deal with the heat. Because their bodies were weaker and more sensitive, the elderly were most affected. Cooling centers and local pools helped people survive. Disaster from within. Sometimes the disaster doesn't come from above us or below us. Sometimes the disaster comes from inside us. Diseases can wipe out plants, animals, and people. Diseases spread in many ways. An epidemic occurs when a disease spreads throughout a wide area. But sometimes diseases spread around the whole world. This is called a pandemic. In turn, scientists are discovering new ways to treat these threats, and people are finding new ways to thrive. The Black Death. Europe in the 1300s was haunted by an unforgettable disease. The Black Death spread through the land, causing terrible skin sores, cramps, fever, and weakness. The disease began in rats and mice. These rodents carried fleas. With a bite, the fleas infected humans. Over 25 million people died. Mass graves were dug to bury hundreds, sometimes thousands of bodies. A frightening flu. Pandemics are not a thing of the past. The 20th century hosted one of the worst pandemics in history. Between the years 1918 and 1920, over 500 million people across the world got the flu. The influenza pandemic began in the spring of 1918. Soldiers traveling between the United States and Europe during World War I spread the disease. The flu virus changed and hit in three waves. 
The second and third waves were deadlier than the first. By late 1919, the virus had killed between 20 and 40 million people around the world. Today, vaccines can prevent people from getting the flu. Today's flu vaccine and modern medicine are able to treat many illnesses quickly, easily, and safely. Learning from disaster, nature can be as deadly as it is beautiful. Earthquakes, tsunamis, and fires are only some of the natural forces that have claimed lives. These disasters haunt us, but it's in the face of a disaster that we learn how strong we really are. Experts around the world are studying how to predict disasters and find new ways to rescue those who are in trouble. Because whatever the disaster, we will weather the storm together. Thank you. 